part six. But the telltale sign and reason I say this is talking about the black Hebrew Israelites using a six sad form of projection, which is the unconscious transfer of one's own desires or emotions to another person, is because of what my God said next. Quote, I will be a swift witness against the witches and against the adulteresses, Rephaim chicks, and against them that swear falsely by my name, and against them that keep back the hireling's wages, and them that oppress the widow, and afflict orphans, and that rest the judgment of the stranger. Stop. Bingo. First, to be in position to do all of these things, you must be in a position of power. Modest business, business owner, etc. You know, something that is not prescribed by my God's seed in the first place. Second, according to Google, the word rest means, W-R-E-S-T means, archaic. Distort the meaning or interpretation of something to suit one's own interest or views. And everybody knows who is the only person upon the face of the planet Nevertheless, fulfilling the prophecy of being within modern-day Israel as well, this can be talking about. Let's all say it together on three. One, two, three. The black Hebrew Israelites and black nationalist Muslims got these sisters out here, the single ones that is, out here working two and three jobs so they can stand on the corner like half-boiled beets. You know what? Please turn to Uncle Isaiah 51 and 20 in the Septuagint. Quote, Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, that has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury, for thou has drunk out and drained the cup of calamity, the cup of wrath, and there was none to comfort thee all the children whom thou bore, and there was none to take hold of thine hand, not even of all the children whom thou hast reared. Therefore these things are against thee. Who shall sympathize with thee in thy grief? Downfall and destruction, famine and sword. Who shall comfort thee? Thy sons are the perplexed ones that sleep at the top of every street as a half-boiled beat. They that are full of the anger of the Lord calls to faint by the Lord God. Example, wow, did you guys hear that? Absolutely amazing that we can see this with our very own eyes today. But again, by the sounds of this prophecy, my God's chosen are still living out his punishments, which can only mean those who achieve should be watched with squinty eyes. I mean, for my God to imply his people are still drinking out of the cup of wrath, heck, he even said that we drunk the cup of calamity dry. And looking at all of the people with lexuses and necklaces Gucci down to their socks. The club parking lots are full every Thursday through Sunday. The weed futures and stocks are at an all-time high. Well, it just don't add up. And for my God to say, quote, And there was none to comfort thee of all the children whom thou bore. And there was none to take hold of thine hand, not even of all the children whom thou hast reared, can only mean every social activist, black or white, is nothing more or less than a trick, thus snare unto you. Obamacare, trap. Free daycare, snare. Their doctrines of demons, abominations. But for my God to say, quote, Thy sons are the perplexed ones that sleep at the top of every street as a half-boiled beat. They that are full of the anger of the Lord calls to faint 
by the Lord God. And looking at what we see on the streets and in the videos, along with the information of different seeds we are now gleaning, can only mean my God is calling his children stupid for being used by those who hate them. Thus, having them stand on the corner full of wrath and rage that my God is causing them. I mean, to say, quote, thy sons are the perplexed ones can only mean there are other sons that are not perplexed. In this case to mean the leaders of the congregation. You know, the leaders of 500 and above. <laughs> But I know by now you are wondering to yourself or even maybe saying out loud something like, scribe, scribe, baby, stop playing and tell us how this all started. Well, I will show you while trying to impart a bit of wisdom in the process. See, now that we see, and we ain't seen nothing yet, but now that we see there are those who are deliberately against us, though they account to be us, and I count their action as good. All we must do is look at the information they push with reckless abandon, even though they have been proven to be wrong. Once you do that, bingo! Case in point, everybody who has the first lick of sense knows that darn map they follow is dead darn wrong. Well, when you look at the cornerstone scripture they use to formulate that darn map, you quickly come to the conclusion they are willfully full of crap. But I want you to check out something interesting in the prophecy of Levi. You know Uncle Levi, the dad of Moses and Aaron the progenitor of our priests and prophets. Well, check this out. Turn to Deuteronomy 33, 8 through 11, please. <clears throat> Quote, And to Levi, he said, Give to Levi his manifestations, comma, and his truth to the holy man, comma, whom they, mixed multitude Raphaim, tempted in the temptation. Semicolon. They, mixed multitude Raphaim, reviled him, Moses, at the water of strife, who says to his father and mother, I have not seen thee. And he knew not his brethren, and he refused to know his sons. He kept thine oracles, comma, and observed thine covenant. They shall declare thine ordinances to Jacob, comma, and thy law to Israel. They shall place incense in the time of thy wrath continually upon thine altar. Bless. Lord, his strength, and accept the works of his, real Jacob's, hand. Break the loins of his enemies that have risen up against him, and let not them that hate him rise up. Example, bingo. So as you can plainly see, Levi's truths were given to holy men who appear, appear, mind you, to have been present and argued with Uncle Moses, thus instigating his low moment at the water rock. We know this can't be the Israelis. We know they were Raphaelim because they're of their characteristics. I mean, for them to say, quote, who say to his father and mother, I have not seen thee, and he knew not his brethren, and he refused to know his sons can only mean they are devils. Case in point, on the Watchmen's last documentary, they show a guy who, if you look at his demeanor and his eyes, he is obviously under a spell or high as hell. 
But this guy was saying stuff like, bleep, my kids. When I come home at night, the face and voice of the elders pop in my head, and I tell, and they tell me to go and study. Bleep, my kids. While the other demons are cheering him on. I saw another video with a GMS guy who looked directly into the camera, face full of rage while saying the most hateful things about his family you can imagine. How he could kill each and every one of them if he only had the chance type crap. No joke. But regardless, for it to say, quote, he kept thine oracles, comma, and observed thine covenant. They shall declare thine ordinances to Jacob, comma, and that and thy law to Israel can only mean people. It can only mean whoever is currently teaching Jacob and Israel, my God's oracle and covenant, cannot be Jacob or Israel. And because we know the Israelis are not teaching Jacob and Israel anything, it can only be one other group. A group that each and every member must surely die first in the wilderness as well. Who can it be now? Do -do 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 -do. Who can it be now? And I know everything we are reading is in context because it said, quote, they shall place incense on the, in the time of thy wrath continually upon thine altar. This sure sounds like someone of the religious order has slash is amongst you, yet setting you up and are taking pride in your fall. I know this perception is true because this is the second time in as many scriptures that we heard this quote break the loins of his enemies that have risen up against him and let not them that hate him rise up example so as you can see thus far ladies and gentlemen of the jury and of Israel those who call you blessed lead you astray that's uncle jared that's uncle isaiah 3. because this topic is so controversial you already know i must put a couple of poison arrows on little miss ivy's utility belt what stop playing you know why for the wise guys but i will round out my case with one last scripture that will prove beyond a shadow of a doubt the black Hebrew Israelites and all the black leadership are Raphaim. And then I will need a couple of days to write and record my closing argument scripture and content. So without further delay, perceptional context. Remember when we started this video series and we determined through the scriptures a key legend to identify the different Raphaim upon the earth? If you said yes, check this out. Please turn to Uncle Ezekiel 34, 15 through 17 in the Septuagint. Quote, I don't know why I'm nervous. I will feed my sheep and I will cause them to rest, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, I will seek that which is lost, and I will recover the stray one, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen the fainted, and will guard the strong, and will feed them with judgment. Listen up closely. And as for you, ye sheep, talking about the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will distinguish between sheep and sheep, comma, between rams and he goats. Example, before you try 
and come up with an explanation. Everything you can possibly say is null and void for the simple fact. Sheep slash rams are of a totally different genus than a he goat. One has wool and the other has hair. So even if you want to believe it's talking about good versus evil, etc., unless you believe in purgatory, you are still riding the goat on this one. Besides, that would have been taken care of with the sheep and sheep separation. Your little Miss Ivy Anna, I rest my case in lieu of my closing argument.